Hey, what's up guys? It's Scares here. Now, our first story of today comes from the Paul brothers. Now, I'm sure we all know that Logan Paul recently has actually had a fight planned with Floyd Mayweather. That's right. Logan Paul is literally going to fight Floyd Mayweather in June. It's going to be obviously one of the biggest YouTuber boxing matches ever. So both Mayweather and Logan Paul have been doing press leading up to this fight. Obviously, they're trying to promote this fight as much as possible. Mayweather says it might make like $100 million. I mean, it's going to be huge. But just today, Mayweather and Logan Paul had a press conference and Logan Paul's brother, Jake Paul, was there and while the press were live with Mayweather Jake Paul actually walks up and steals Floyd Mayweather's hat in front of everyone and then runs off with it this video has over 3 million views in only a few hours just watch this now we really can't share the full video with you here on YouTube because Floyd and his security team literally beat up on Jake Paul after he takes the hat and you can see Jake walking off holding his face like he's been badly injured. Floyd then confronts Jake again, saying that he's actually going to kill him for taking his hat. Just watch this. Now this fight between Jake and Floyd was everywhere. Every single major media outlet was reporting on this. Everyone was talking about this over Twitter and social media. And even Conor McGregor himself came out and spoke on this today. Now if you guys don't know, Jake Paul has been trying to get a fight with Conor McGregor. He's been calling out Conor McGregor constantly over social media. And Conor has not responded at all. But today, Conor McGregor makes it clear that he knows what's going on with Jake Paul. And he calls out Floyd Mayweather on Instagram. He says, hey Leonard Ellerby, what the f*** is Floyd? At. The kid curled up, didn't fight back once, and Floyd is still running around acting like the tough guy. The kid actually just pulled the shambles of a situation Floyd is in out of the drain for him. He should thank him. It's embarrassing. Pro to pro, it's embarrassing. He will not scratch 10 million for this fight, and he already knows it. It was canceled once already. The world is watching this on Twitter. He'd fight a half decent pro and command 20 million upwards, yet it's this shit. Whatever way you spin this, it's sad. Fight someone for real on your record or f off mate. Now the next story for today's video comes from Mr. Beast. Now I'm sure you all know who Mr. Beast is at this point. I mean he is one of the biggest YouTubers ever. He has over 50 million subscribers. He pulls tens of millions of views every single video. But recently Mr. Beast has faced some backlash mainly from journalists who are saying here that his former employees have accused him of bullying during the time that they were working for him on the Mr. Beast channel. So these accusations came out from a New York Times article from a journalist known as Taylor Lorenz. Now Taylor has reported on other YouTubers and influencers before and the main premise of her article here is about how Mr. Beast wants to take over the business world and it covers Mr. Beast's rise to fame on YouTube and the different companies that he's made but it also brings up a lot of negative stories on him. I mean it really does go into every negative thing that's ever been said about Mr. Beast and they even speak with several former employees from Mr. Beast companies who claim that they've been mistreated by him in some way. It says here that Matt Turner who was an editor for Mr. Beast from February 2018 to September 2019 said that Mr. Beast had berated him almost every single day. Mr. Beast often called him by a phrase used to insult people with mental disabilities, leaving him in tears. Mr. Turner, who did not grow up with Mr. Beast, said that while his boss regularly featured his hometown friends in videos, he had struggled to get acknowledgement. I was not credited for anything I did. I'd ask for credit and he'd credit someone else. This article then goes on to bring up another former editor for Mr. Beast. This guy actually edited for Mr. Beast back in 2018 and he claims here that he quit after only a week of working for Mr. Beast because he was a perfectionist apparently and nothing was ever good enough for him. This goes on to talk about how Mr. Beast fans have gone after these people for speaking out against Mr. Beast in the past and obviously this article gained a ton of traction, okay? You had a lot of people talking about this but many people were saying that this article feels like a total hit piece on Mr. Beast and this is because people feel like the former employees who spoke out could be lying about being mistreated. So the main person who speaks out against Mr. Beast in this article is Matt Turner, okay? And 
he obviously used to work for Mr. Beast. This is true, it was confirmed. But in a video from a few years ago, he actually talks about how he loved working for Mr. Beast and how it was a complete dream job. Just watch this. This was a dream job for so long, and when I got it, I was so happy I got it, and the job is still an amazing job. If you if you have the opportunity to get this job that I had, um, totally take it. It's a lot of fun. So this is why many people feel like this article was a total hit piece, because one of the main people who spoke out in this article said that he clearly loved his job before working for Mr. Beast, and even people who used to work for Mr. Beast in the past are now coming out and saying that he was a great boss. The YouTuber Blues Dang tweeted out saying, I can't believe I'm saying this all again, but in 2016 and 2018, I did some fairly forgettable work for Mr. Beast. He became my friend quickly and we haven't really lost contact ever since. He has made sure I've been given as much opportunity and support he could give me and I am more than grateful for that. To see articles tearing at him when the writers themselves have some dirt on their own Twitter profiles to explain proves that everyone just wants to take him down. He's nothing but a genuine legend and one of the good ones. And keep in mind that the people who used to work for Mr. Beast who spoke out against him in this article, they used to work for him back in 2018. So that was three years ago. Now, multiple YouTubers were calling out this article in their videos yesterday, and one of these people was Philip DeFranco. That's right, Phil himself spoke out against this article in his last video. He talked about how he felt like this article was a hit piece, and then he actually got into it with the journalist of this article on Twitter. He tweeted this out. He says, Taylor, just be honest. You made a thinly veiled hit piece on Mr. Beast so you could still get the outrage clicks while still making it like it wasn't the whole point of your article so youtubers would still trust talking with you so phil straight up calls out the journalist who wrote this article here and this journalist then responds saying this is a gross misrepresentation to see from a big creator who purports to support journalism 11 former workers from mr b spoke out for my piece phil calling those workers liars says it all big creators like phil don't want accountability in the industry you have to ask why now there was a lot of back and forth tweets that were posted last night that were deleted so we honestly can't share with you guys everything that happened last night but it really turned into a war between youtubers versus journalists you had many journalists supporting taylor and her article saying that mr beast must be a horrible employer because 11 of his former employees spoke out against him but you also had many youtubers calling out taylor here saying they felt like she made this article just for clicks now the next story for today's video is yet another update to the edp 445 situation now at this point i'm sure you all know what happened with edp but for those of you who don't know edp was a huge youtuber who was exposed for trying to text a 13 year old girl decoy and he says here that he wanted to get intimate with her these were some really creepy text conversations and the youtuber known as Chet goldstein had actually exposed him on his youtube channel he confronted him in public and edp even admitted to setting these text conversations and then they actually tried to call the police on him and he said that he was going to go to jail and then he walked away and he drove off so it was obviously a huge deal this video made millions of views and the craziest part about this whole situation is that that the person that was trying to expose EDP got exposed himself. Chet Goldstein was exposed for saying the N-word in videos in the past, and he had said some pretty messed up things on video. People felt like he was just totally out of line with some of the things he said on his videos. And after this whole situation, EDP got permanently banned off of YouTube. So he has no longer been on YouTube, but he recently said on his Facebook page that he was going to start up his own website. He was going to start up his own platform, and he's going to continue to make his videos there. Well, EDP has slowly started to come back to making videos, and he just posted a new video last night and in this video EDP actually goes on the offense and he calls out the people that try to expose him he calls out Chet Goldstein here Chet Goldstein or should I call you Alex Rosen whatever the fuck your name is my nigga whatever the fuck you prefer to be called you know here's the thing my nigga let me go ahead and holler at you for a quick second see I've been making videos for coming up on 11 years now, my nigga, you feel me? I've been in the game for a cool-ass minute. I've seen punk-ass, bitch-made, ho-ass motherfuckers like yourself come and fucking go. You know what I mean? I've seen, you know, piece of shit, dipshit, punk-ass, motherfucking trash goddamn content creators like yourself. You know what I mean? Go from 10,000 subscribers and then automatically jump up to 108K because they're over here, you know, piggybacking, you know, off of the success of other fucking YouTubers, my nigga, you feel me? You know, it, you know, it's a goddamn shame. It's a crime fucking shame, my nigga, at the fact that these motherfuckers aren't entertaining enough to sit back and provide the people with content, you feel me, and have six and have subscribers subscribe and actually be entertained by their fucking content 
You can't fucking do that, my nigga. You feel me? You got to sit back and walk around here, make a fucking ass out of yourself in public, making fun of kids with Down syndrome and shit. There's a fucking video all over the end. I'm sorry, all over the Internet of you, of you using racial fucking slurs and shit. Oh, man, the fucking N words, my nigga, they'll be fucking offended, man. You know what I mean? Fuck these N words and all and all that fucking shit. Your credibility is bro see the difference between me and you is my nigga the fucking eat that pussy movement my nigga we riding fucking packs bro this ain't the fucking end this is just the goddamn beginning motherfucker you feel me and we will continue to straight whip our dicks out and piss in bitches mouths my nigga you feel me we take care of our own you know what i mean bitches like you you're gonna fizzle the fuck out who the fuck are you dog you know what i mean some punk ass motherfucking red-headed leprechaun looking bitch you feel me? So this video from EDP got very mixed feedback because EDP never brought up what actually happened with him and Chet Goldstein and why he was exposed in the first place. He just never talks about that at all. He just brings up the fact that he hates these YouTubers and the people that exposed him and how he thinks that they are just looking for clout, but he just doesn't bring up the fact that he was texting this 13 year old decoy. So when EDP was first banned from YouTube, many people felt like he was just going to stop uploading forever because he was exposed for something very serious. I mean, how can he ever come back from something like that? Well, it turns out that he really is going to try to come back from this. He's regularly uploading to his Facebook. He's going to start regularly uploading to his website. It looks like EDP is just going to continue being active on the internet and he's going to continue posting videos like nothing happened. And yes, bitch, the website is real. You feel me? It's going to be popping. The website is real. This ain't no this ain't some troll ass video where it's like, oh, fucking, this is just some old video that he made five years ago. No, 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 no. See, the website is going to succeed. Why is it going to succeed? Motherfucker, because I love doing this shit. I love making content, you feel me? I actually love, you know, sharing my thoughts and opinions on shit, my nigga. Unlike your bitch made ho ass motherfucking self. And that's it for our video tonight, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you later. Peace.